Hello and welcome, my name is Trismegistus and today we're going to be reading through and speculating about the latest Factorio Friday Facts. Friday Facts 412 Undo, Redo Improvements and Car Latency Driving Posted by Strangepan and Lou Hello, we have another exciting batch of facts for you today. Redo by Strangepan the ability to redo things has been requested ever since we added the undo. Adding redo was one of my first projects at Wubi, and one I've been super excited to announce for a long time. Now, in addition to using Ctrl Z to reverse a build, deconstruct or upgrade order, you can now use Ctrl plus Y to reissue a previously undone order. You can also use the new redo shortcut in the shortcut bar. It works exactly like you'd expect. We actually got a preview of this in some screenshots, so we've already sort of seen this this button. I guess this is one of the disadvantages of like the Easter egg approach in that if you preview things when they get announced, even though they're really cool, they feel a little bit like a damp squib because this one is so obviously a redo button and we have seen it in that image and we worked out what it was and I, I don't think there's any kind of surprise the icon they're using for it. so. It was an easy one to predict, but this is a huge improvement, quality of life improvement, but it's one we already know about. So, you know, I suppose that's the disadvantage of, of Easter eggs, I suppose, isn't it? The new redo shortcut lights up when there's something to redo and is disabled when there's nothing to redo. I think, you know, it's a really great feature that's coming in that's going to make things so much easier. There's so many times that I've accidentally undone something and particularly I'm a bit chronic for hammering. I'll do a lot of things, a lot of builds, a lot of changes, and then I'll undo them all as a mass undo and just hit Control, you know, Control Z loads of times. And then I find I've undone too much, and I don't know how many things that I've undone I actually wanted. So to have the ability to just redo them with a single click and find where I was in the undo list is going to be hugely useful and hugely helpful. Undo information and confirmation by Strangepan. One thing that is super annoying and destructive is undoing actions, sometimes by accident, and something far away from a long time ago is also undone. For starters, we add a flying text notification that pops up when you use the undo hotkey. This gives you some idea of what the heck you just did. I'm pretty chronic for that as well. I am not very good at keyboard discipline, shall we say, and I, I will accidentally hit Control, you know, Control Z, particularly because of when you, where you think it is in the WASD, you know, WASD keys, if I'm trying to hit ALT for some reason, um, then I'll probably accidentally hit, you know, Control Z as a, as a combination. So, so it's really good that it does a pop up now to say what you've undone. For me, more is more important for the whole mass undo when I hit, you know, hit that a load of times and it it'll then list them out. I'll be to say, you know, when it says walls, you know, built undone. And I'm like, oh no, that was the thing I was doing before, and I can just redo that that one action. Really just a, a lovely, nice little little touch to say what it's doing. And here we just see it in the graphic where it says undo deconstruction of 33 entities, undo construction of substation, undo construction of substation, undo construction of small electric pole. So the de deconstruction of 33 entities, I assume, was a mass drag and, you know, uh, deconstruct. In addition, when trying to undo an action that is more than a few minutes old, there is a confirmation dialog pop-up. To really bring it all together, Gen has added an awesome visual preview that reveals the entities to be affected, highlights entities to be deconstructed, and shows ghosts of entities to be built. And here we just see the screen capture of that new GUI, and it says in the text, are you sure you want to undo an action from 5 minutes and 37 seconds ago? And then it describes what the action is, which is on the surface of Nalvis, so it's a Nalvis action. That would be useful, I think, for when we're working in Space Age, so that if you're skipping around on various planets, you know, remote viewing them and doing some work on each one, when you hit Control Z, it's telling you on which planet it's going to do the undo. And then it actually describes it in detail. Undo deconstruction of 45 pipes, pipe to grounds, chemical plants, small electric poles, medium electric poles, an oil refinery, a big electric pole. So when it's talking about the ghosts and you know, showing it as rebuild and build and all that sort of stuff, my assumption is what's going on in this image is because these were built, they were actually already there, and the order that was given was to deconstruct them. They are deconstructed, so they are not there. So an undo of deconstruction would be to rebuild them. 
which is why they're appearing as a ghost, because it's saying this is what's going to happen if you undo that action. There is this actually something a bit funky in this this thing here, and I guess so. Basically, if you look at the pipes, they're not connected properly because you've got a heavy oil here that's apparently connected to a petroleum line. You know, it should presumably be be jumping over, or maybe this is this was actually reversed. I suspect that might be it. So if this was actually reversed, but then that's connected to no, that that should be reversed, and so should that one, I think. I think this is meant to have reversed ones, so it's weird it shows it as, you know, as, as normal orientation rather than re reversed orientation. I, I mean, actually looking at it, that's not how it shows blueprints anymore, is it? So when it does blueprints now, it actually shows them properly constructed, like, because these are like the individual, the graphic for the individual item, and that's what it tends to do when you do go, you know, blueprints and all that sort of stuff. It shows you the the ghost version of the individual item. But of course, when you connect them with pipes, it's actually a slightly different graphic because it actually shows them connected together. And it now does that in blueprints. So this must be some like intermediate version or something where it didn't have the connected pipes, but it did have the flipped refineries. That's all I can think. But as I say, it seems a bit odd that you've got flipped refineries in this, even though they're not shown as flipped in ghosts, which I guess they wouldn't be. If this was the old ghosts code, then it would just show it as the normal item, even though it's actually flipped. Hmm, interesting. One makes me wonder when each of those features were introduced, basically. It didn't mean anything, <laughs> I don't think. But it was just interesting that that was the order maybe that they were put in. Another thing we discovered during our playtesting is that it's easy to forget what you had in the undo stack. This is especially true in Space Age, in which players are constantly using remote view to jump between planets and space platforms. So we added a preview tooltip to the undo and redo shortcut buttons that describes exactly what you're about to undo and on which planet or space platform. Huh, that sounds interesting. Yeah, so this is when you hover over this icon. So if you hover over the undo and presumably you know if you say undo a few things and then want to redo them it'll also do it then and basically it pops up this dialogue to show you what you're doing and on this example the actual text says surface now this undo construction of a fast two fast inserters and two blue assembly machines and that will be done via control z or obviously pressing the button so if those were built possibly by a, a blueprint or something there's a, there is a weird thing in this. I don't know. It's very strange. But this inserter, I'm sure it's just because they've slapped down it. You know, it's a, just an example. And this, you know, stick something down sort of thing so we can do some stuff. The inserter's going the wrong way. It's pulling out iron plate and, and copper uh, circuits, not putting them in. Of course, there's no. this is why I'm saying it's just uh, something they've stuck down to show us. Because, you know, there's no belt for it to feed stuff in and... You know, no requester boxes if it was being actually fed like that way because it could be this thing where it you know when you change the recipe it will buffer the items that it had in and all that sort of stuff but there don't, don't appear to be any of that going on either so I think this is just a weird demonstration where the inserter just happened to be the wrong way around and they didn't really spot it tell which way an inserter is going because it's got the three legs and the, the front leg always points in the direction that it's it's facing undo improvements by strange pan Undo, in its general purpose, works great, but there is one major issue that has remained for many years. Putting down a blueprint and then using Undo does not actually undo everything. Recipes set by the blueprint remain. Wires created are not removed. Rotations are not restored to the previous direction. Filters and requests are not reverted. This presents a problem because one of the axioms of Undo is that anything you do will be undone. Cleaning up a misplaced blueprint should just work with undo. So let's get to work. Going to be honest, I didn't realise on some of these. But yeah, I mean, the fundamental point is, is absolutely right. If you've got a function that is undo, then everything that you've done should undo when you hit undo. So yeah. Undo wire connection. Boskid added the ability to undo wire connections. If you make a mistake while fiddling with combinators or power lines, you can use undo and redo to quickly get back on track. So this is just a video of that in action. They're adding a red wire to a power pole and then onto a pump. 
and then hit using Control Z undo to take it off again, and then redo to re add it back on again. I mean, just a nice little quality of life improvement, basically, because you know it's not that massively difficult to re-click on the things, but particularly where you've got complex sets of combinators together and lots of machines that you've wired together, lots of chests, having the ability to undo rather than fiddly click on exactly the right things that you clicked on before is going to be just a nice little new quality of life improvement really. When placing a blueprint, the created wires are also added to the undo action. So that part of the blueprint problem is fixed. Undo entity settings. Tobias added the ability to undo entity settings. When you use shift right click to copy an entity settings and shift left click to paste them onto another entity, that action also gets put onto the undo stack and redo stack. Lots of tricky words in that one, but basically you can see it in action here. If you've never used it, if you hold down shift and right click on a building, which is what they're about to do here, so, and then you hold down shift and left click, you will copy and paste basically. So right click, copy, left click, paste, and the same here. They just right click, copy, and then left click, paste. And then for each of those, they're using undo. So here again, we see copy, paste, 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 and then control Z, control Z, control Z, copy, paste, 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 and then control Z, control Z, control Z. So it's a much more intuitive and, and what you'd expect. And it just finishes off saying this also applies to the settings copied when placing a blueprint over entities. So another blueprint problem checked off the list. Undo blueprint rotations. Using super force mode, it is possible to override an entity direction. This is a nice feature and saves robots mining and placing all the entities again. But of course, we need to make it work with undo. And here we see in action in the little video here, they're just taking a, shall we call it a blueprint? It's probably more like a copy paste, overlapping it and using the new super force build. So the one that's like the super override and it just instantly flips all of the belts over. Currently in the game, you could obviously manually do it by just overdrawing it, but if you wanted to change the direction of a belt, you have to ghost place, and the bots will then come and like flip them around effectively, and basically that would then eventually rotate all of the others. And of course, if you're doing that with a lot of belts, then it's really slow, because the bots have to fly out, do it, fly back again. And with this, you can just instantaneously use the Super Force build to just flip them all over, which is super little, you know, nice little touch. And then, of course, with Control Z, you can just flip that back again if you if you realise you accidentally flipped the blueprint or, or what have you. So really, really, really nice, you know, quality of life stuff again. This doesn't apply to rotations made by hand using the R key, as that is easy to create yourself and could spam up the undo queue. I'll be honest, interesting. <laughs> Interesting point that because they've just made the point that if you're gonna have undo do work, it should undo everything. So really, that should be in there. Um, I understand why it isn't though. Obviously, if you've gone to the trouble of doing it by hand, you know, then you're probably in the territory where. No, I think it should be there. <laughs> I'm, I'm to be frank, but I get I get it. It's because you might have done it quite a lot. And if you're just literally hitting, I guess particularly like me, where my muscle memory is so ingrained that I basically can't use Shift R, it's so ingrained that you know I can't flip anti-clockwise. It's always a clockwise rotation. So if I'm going from down and I want it to go right, I'll actually flip it all the way around and hit you know three times. So I could understand why you would end up with a lot of rotations in your undo list. And that would be something you wouldn't want to have there, but I, I really think it should be. <laughs> because, you know, if you have an undo button, it should undo everything you've done. Conclusion. With all these additions, undoing a blueprint placement is now a fully safe and clean operation. A small whoopsie won't leave your setup in disarray. A few details are subject to change, but the undo redo system is feeling way more useful than ever before. These changes are coming to Factorio 2.0 and will be available to all players. I guess it's just very quickly worth noting they don't specifically say that about because this is actually one of those blogs that's two parts. You know, it's effectively two blogs in one. They don't specifically say that to the next part, but I can't see how it wouldn't 
be a, a 2.0 feature as well. I think or everything in this Factorio for Artifacts is coming to version 2.0, so will be improvements for all players, basically. I say they don't specifically say that about the car latency one that we're about to dive into. Car latency driving by Lou. Anyone who had the dubious pleasure of driving a car in multiplayer with significant latency probably had their heart skip 100 milliseconds just after reading the title. For the rest of you, let me describe the problem. Driving around obstacles in Factorio is hard enough. Doing so with a delayed reaction of your vehicle to your input is even harder, especially if you want to go fast, which is usually the reason for driving in the first place. We then see the video here. There's a little capture thing here which is showing what keys are being pressed just to emphasize the point. I will be honest, it would have been useful to have these videos as like a slow version. I have popped them out and we'll try and run them at like quarter speed or something, but it sometimes gets a bit jittery when you try and do that, so that may not be successful. But if you look at this video, essentially what they're trying to do is they're trying to drive and you know react to objects that are coming on screen and failing, basically. And the reason for the failure is given in the caption in that it says driving in 1.1 with 30 ticks of latency, which is 500 milliseconds with 60 UPS. I swear I was sober. So yeah, I'm just going to put it on 0.5 speed and we'll see if it works properly. But say sometimes they get a bit jittery, so this may not actually help. So hitting enter to get in the car. Hitting W, see the long, slow pause before it actually does anything. And then they're using the D key, which tries to mentally do it, is turn right. And you see how they're pressing the key. And then it's actually taking a little while before it does the thing. So W being pressed there to move forward, and it's only just moving forward. And then the A is to move left. So the basic point is they're making the key press, and then there's a pause before the thing they're pressing for happens. And of course, your reaction time, and you're saying, right, oh, there's a robot there. I pressed it to go right. And then it doesn't react to that change until you've hit the robo port. Then you drive forward and you know the thing is there. So you press the let turn left key, A at the right, you know, the power pole, sorry, is there at that time. You press the turn left key. And of course, the lag again gets you and, and, and you don't actually turn again. You hit the thing. And presumably, the <laughs> wheels attempt to turn once you've hit the, the power pole. So. I hope that's a little clearer with it being slower. So it would have been nice to get a, a sort of slower video anyway. And the reason for this latency, of course, could be like server lag and just performance lag and things like that. But I believe really this is talking about a multiplayer improvement. So when literally doing a slalom with a battle tank, it would be nice to not make it feel like you're doing so on an ice skating rink, right? The basic idea is the same as all other latency hiding features. This just links to a very old Friday Facts where they were talking about latency in multiplayer, which is why I think this is talking about latency as well. I'm not often going to read that out. Predict the future game state from available information and show the player the predicted state instead of their current one. Reaction to inputs is instantaneous equals the latency is hidden. Although there are things that could never be predicted perfectly, actions of other players, or would be too expensive to predict, interaction with enemies, other moving vehicles like trains, robots, deconstructing obstacles, etc. The basic driving seemed simple enough. Static obstacles and state of the car. And in truth, the basic implementation was simple enough. But like we tend to quip around the office, nothing is simple in Factorio. And that is doubly so when you are trying to efficiently simulate Factorio in order to hide latency. Some of the issues were incorrectly evaluating the values of speed modifiers, for example, fuel and terrain, the stickers, which are the yellow green slime from spitters and worms that we all love, audio issues, some sounds are not being played when they should have been, others are being played multiple times when they shouldn't have, graphics issues, from simple ones like car lights not drawing properly to incorrectly spawning tracks and exhaust particles and many issues with entering and exiting the car in weird circumstances. There are also issues around uh, remote view and the editor and switching between them. There was an interesting issue where damage calculations for the game state and the latency state had a different order of operation. 
which were almost always equivalent except when doing very little damage to an entity with very little health remaining due to rounding errors which is exactly what happens when you're trying to destroy an obstacle by pushing or even better turning with a stationary tank and many small issues such as selecting a latency hidden car the latency hidden car not being moved by belts an interaction with a not yet published mechanic screen positioning when deactivated latency hiding due to combat etc while one would expect some of the prediction imperfection to be barely noticeable unfortunately that is not the case due to how we handle certain aspects of latency hiding so i guess it is just worth just trying to explain and i'm not going to read through this entire blog but the basic way they do latency hiding so latency as i say is like delay essentially and it could be due to lag through server the connection there's all sorts of sources of it which is why they just sort of refer to it as latency rather than lag as such um, but basically what they do and there is a sentence here which like very quickly covers it technically the latency hiding is done by having a special layer we call it latency state which duplicates the relevant part of the game state every tick this latency state is cleared and initialized from the regular game state then all the buffered local user actions that haven't been applied yet in the game state are applied to the latency state okay so essentially what they're saying is that they make a copy of the game every tick and on that special copy of the game they make the changes that you are making to your control via your control input okay and the point is that, and this is why it's about multiplayer in particular, is that the example might be, and this is actually how I played multiplayer with a friend of mine, is that I host the game. Okay, it's, so it's my game state that is being transport, transferred, transported, as it were, to his machine, and his machine is recreating that game state as my machine understands it. Obviously, any input he is doing, any changes he is making, are being sent to my machine, updated on the like the master copy of the game state, and then you know any that changes that I'm making are coming the other way. Okay, and that's why my copy is the master copy. It's the the, the true or true state of the game, and so when he experiences latency what will happen is there will be you know jumps and skips because that information perhaps he's an information he's sent to my machine it updates and then it comes back again with changes that i've done and so it will jump to suddenly that new version of the game so the way to hide that that they use is that effectively well while that transfer is happening they make a copy of the game and what he's doing is applied to that copy of the game and then when it comes back, hopefully, they're then matched up. There might be some slight imperfection, slight difference. And there are certain things, as it says on the other blog, that they can't predict very well, combat in particular, because it's so complicated. So something like a car where you're barreling along at a fairly constant speed and any direction change you make is actually fairly slow. It's, it's more acute in the car. But certainly in the tank, you know, you sort of, you're quite trundling, you're quite slow turning. So if you started hitting the key to turn and then your game state, you know, it does that movement. And that's obviously not the real game state. You are somewhere else in the real game state on my machine. And so by the time that comes back again, you might get an inaccuracy because maybe he stopped pressing the key and so you get a little bit of juddering, but it's a heck of a lot better than this 500 milliseconds like it shows of lag or delay where, you know, you can't even see what's going on, basically, because it's so slow and so inaccurate. And of course, the simulation that it's showing is simply what's going to happen on the main server. It just needs to catch up, if you see what I mean. So hopefully that's a bit of an explanation of what they're doing. And the point they're making in this part of the blog is that there are all sorts of funky things going on. So, for example, sound. And obviously, I don't know what the causes of those are, but you can imagine that the game state is being told, oh, this is happening, so it's playing a sound. And, you know, it comes back through the, the system and they're slightly desynced. And so 
on my game state that's the copy I press my key you know to shoot my shotgun it fires the shotgun by the time it comes back again it's suddenly said oh you've got to play the shotgun shooting sound so it fires it makes it again even though that's slightly out of sync so you would hear it twice and you can imagine lots of things like that happening due to that jittering of like rubber banding basically you might have heard the term where it's trying to catch up with itself even though it's you know basically the same sort of thing so all these issues were minor things that they discovered when they implemented the change essentially and so small fixes were needed to you know, make those work essentially we then got a new video here i'll just read the caption again we'll try and look at it in half speed again it may be a bit jittery in and of itself so the caption just says a bug where initial speed of the vehicle being entered was not correctly accounted for with a latency of 60 ticks ghostly transparent visualization of game state car is a debug option I don't know if that's a current debug option or a, or a future one. Hmm. So again, I've zoomed in, separate video. I'll play it at slower speed and we'll see how it works. It's mainly so you can kind of link the key controls, basically. So this is the bug that was happening. So you notice it presses W to set off. Presses Enter. Right. So it gets out of the vehicle. Let's, let's loop for it, loop it around again. So press W to set off. Enter to leave the vehicle. Okay, so it pops out on the side. And then you've got this tank still rolling along. Moves forward. And then, uh, this is the bit I don't actually understand. I think they're then back in the vehicle somehow. Because maybe the latency version is ahead and it thinks you're still in the vehicle? Yeah, initial speed of the vehicle being entered. So when you jump back into it, it thinks, or it's got it recorded, the speed that you left the vehicle, perhaps. And so you, you, your actual tank is going to be stopped, you know, in front, sorry. And the, the actual, like my, you know, the game state version of the tank is going to be here. So they're going to be <laughs> in the wrong place. So when you presumably catch up again it'll suddenly jump backwards next one then the caption says a bug where vehicle was not being moved by belts in latency latency of 30 ticks i don't think i need to pop this one out as a separate video because you can see what's happening basically <laughs> it's quite comical actually you drive across the belts where you'd expect it to drag you up you know tanks are moved by belts basically so and vehicles are generally spider you adjusts its leg so it stands in the same position it's quite cool to watch actually but basically it drives onto the belts and you'd think it would move it up but it doesn't because this is the copy and the copy isn't aware of the belts being there so it only moves it across when the real tank hits the real meaning you know the one that's on the the, the server the master server as it were and that moves up and then it says move the vehicle up and so it just randomly shifts up for no apparent reason because you've got to imagine where if you're playing with this you wouldn't see this ghost version you would just be driving along you go across the belt nothing's happened then suddenly you drag across that would be even worse i think if although i suppose you would still destroy it if there was an object here you wouldn't actually damage it i guess until you hit it later you know if you accidentally got dragged onto it and hit a power pole it would suddenly get magically damaged later on i guess latency one time effects there are some stuff that you want to be done only once per client regardless of if that's during the game state or latency update like spawning a vehicle or playing a sound a major part of how we accomplish this is by turning these into latency one time effects comparing them with a data structure of already performed ones that persist through both latency and game state updates and only executing the ones that have not yet been performed. Unfortunately, these checks need to be quite strict to allow, for example, multiple particles from the same source at the same tick close to each other. As a result, when there is even a minuscule mismatch between our predictions, we are rewarded by receiving an extra set of sounds and particles for every latency update all at the same time. Or, even better, when the not accounted for circumstances is happening for a bunch of ticks in a row, 
we get an additional set for every game state update tick, where our latency predictions differed from the one done previously game state update. <laughs> That's a paragraph and a half. These sound like they would be small and unnoticeable, but they are quite the opposite, so every small imperfection will need to be fixed. Of course, the smaller your latency is, any unaccounted for happenstances will be both less observable and less likely. So I guess there's no example with this one, but this is what I was talking about before, where even though you're keeping a strict list of, right, play the shotgun firing sound now, and it will be played differently, you know, in terms of real time for each player because of the lag and blah, 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 blah. In reality, with the update happening, it's going to get a signal saying play it twice. And so you, hit, you hear ba bang or bang, bang, and you're like, why is the shotgun firing twice? So there are all sorts of things like that that clearly they needed to fix or, you know, are just things they either can't properly avoid, but they can kind of manage essentially. I am assuming that they have, is the point of that is that they have fixed them. It didn't say that they fixed them or kind of how they fixed them. But I'm assuming the point is that this is them identifying what they are. And, you know, it then fixes them or they have then fixed them rather. But it didn't, it didn't actually say that. So I, I'm just assuming that. So, yeah. Result. Here we just see a, a video, the caption to it is saying driving in current version with 30 ticks of latency, 500 milliseconds with 60 UPS. So they basically got into the car and they're driving around. Remember the ghost one is the real, you know, the master server, the, the version of the server that has the sort of real game state and the solid one is the latency version. And they're basically driving around in the car and then they get into the tank. You can see this rubber banding going on when they get out the vehicle in particular, because that's clearly not something it's accounting for. But you see the difference there. It is showing the killed off tree and it avoids the pipe now. But when they jump out, it does have that catch up thing happening. The I don't know if you saw the chest getting destroyed. It was a bit of a weird lag to it but it's clearly the vehicle side of it that's going to be the most important because that's why you're going to crash into stuff because of the latency the fact that you crashed into it deliberately with that like that box so it missed the key bit is that it misses the power poles here you know it slaloms around them and doesn't hit them there's a weird jump and catch up when you get out but that's acceptable the destruction of that box is quite delayed but they've clearly deliberately driven through that box. Yeah. So that's not going to be too bad because they know they've driven through it. Whereas the other stuff they're deliberately trying to avoid. You know, they're driving into that tree because. But then they're avoiding the power poles and pipes. Yeah. So clearly it's not perfect, but it gets the worst problem. The driving causing you to smash into stuff, fixed. As you can see in the video, the result is that latency is effectively hidden for almost all civilian intents and purposes. We hope you will all enjoy driving together once 2.0 arrives. As always, redo your thoughts at the usual places. So overall reaction is, is very good. But basically, yes, so this is the, the pop-up that appears. My assumption is it didn't quite say it, that perhaps there's a five minute limit. So if you aren't trying to undo something from more than five minutes ago, then it will pop up this dialogue because it just says a few minutes old. So I don't know what that, that threshold is. But yes, I, I hope that's a, a settable thing because it says more than a few minutes old and five minutes 37. Because when I'm building, there's often like big pause, particularly, I'll be honest, on stream, you know, where I might be chatting to chat. But there's often big pauses between when I want to undo things because I'll build something and I'll sort of look at it for a couple of minutes and maybe think about it and, you know, maybe like 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 that with the chemical plants, reorient the machines or something. Do you know what I mean? And and then I'll try and undo it and I'll do undo a mass undo and and also does that 
have a cutoff there. So if I've if I built say five things and it's taken me five minutes to build, and then I'm like, no, actually, I just I'll, I'll undo all of that, and I hit undo five times, will that trigger this dialogue? You know, say for example, the first three are within five minutes, so it doesn't, and then the next two, each time it's going to pop up this dialogue. That could be a bit annoying, actually, if you're just trying to undo mass undo. Maybe I'll just have to play the game a bit better. But but yeah, that feels like that might be a little annoying if you're trying to do a load of undos and it's going to pop this up every time just simply because it was three minutes ago. And I say I hope that is configurable, that we can do it as what we want. So if we want it to pop up for 10 minutes, then, you know, uh, nothing that we undid before 10 minutes, you know, would pop up this dialogue. I hope that is controllable, even if it is tucked away in the advanced menu, you know, preview. I mean, the preview is obviously going to be hugely useful, particularly for stuff you did do a while ago that you might accidentally undo or, you know, ask it to undo and it's just checking. But this just does get into that territory of like, you know, Microsoft products where it's like, are you sure? Or in a lot of other games where you're like, are you sure you want to do that? Are you sure? Are you absolutely sure? Are you really sure? Are you definitely sure? And you just have to click through about 20 dialogues just to get it to, you know, undo a small thing. So that this is that's just the source of my resistance on this. I'm sure it's fine. And I'm sure if you can configure it in particular, then that'll be great. I mean, I'm assuming basically because, you know, you could be looking at this could be five minutes, 37 seconds ago that you did this. So you would hover over to see the dialogue and it would there you would click the button and then it would pop this up anyway. Again, I hope they're not introducing friction where, you know, we just need some tweaks, basically. But yeah, well, obviously we'll have to see how it works in the game, but yeah. As for the lag thing, um, I've only really, I'll be honest, I think I experienced lag once in my entire time of playing, which was when I did my Mega Base series and I fired it all up and because it was so horribly inefficient, I was getting real latency problems. I don't know that this would solve them. Maybe it would, because it's actually the machine running at a very slow UPS rather than a, a latency thing. So I don't think that would actually have solved my problem. But the friend I play with that I mentioned does get latency and lag quite a lot. And so if this makes their life a little bit easier with that, then all in favour. But it's a very difficult one for me to comment on because I simply haven't encountered it. But anything that improves latency and you know lag and that has to be good or rather at least the perception of it you know it's still there it's just that it makes it more playable there are two very slight possibilities for things that are being shown that are not properly revealed the first was in this image which is if you go right into the corner here you can see an icon there which I personally don't recognize, but I'm obviously a little bit scarred from making that guess because there's a lot of things that when I see them out of context or just randomly on images, I end up not recognizing them and they're, they are known and simple things. I thought maybe it could be the chemical lab, but I don't think it is. I don't think that's what the icon is. So this could be something we've not seen yet. It doesn't remind me of any of the buildings we've seen, you know, the big mining drill, the MP, the foundry. It doesn't really look like those. So this could be something. If it is a something, this is such a small hint as to what it is. I'm basically clueless, you know. We've got some kind of number on the side there. So it looks like it might have quite a large number because that looks like a zero. And there's enough space. If you imagine that's a zero there that they could potentially have like 100 of them or 200 or something. So it looks like something you would have in large volumes. I don't know that that's any help at all, to be honest with you. Um, and I don't have a clue what that might be. It doesn't particularly look like... So the two buildings we got the hint of before were green. That's yellow, clearly. So I don't know what that is. It could easily be like elevated rail or... I mean, it could be Lightning Connect Collector or something like that, the icon for that. But if you look at the proportion of it, so this is like, you see you get the curve on the button there. That is happening on that side of things. So whatever it is, is fairly large, I would say. It's like covering all of that central area. 
but what it is, I mean, it's just such a tiny little bit of nothing. The other possibility of something new is it pops up this icon. So when they drive across the box with the tank, and this isn't new, it seems like more of a tweak. But you see they drive across the box with the tank. Oops. And it pops up this yellow icon here. From memory, it doesn't do that in the current base game. It just puts in a, a ghost icon. So I don't really know if this is a change to how we're getting, um, what would you call it, ghost replacement type icons being shown. At the moment, I believe it's a... Are they purple? I've got purple in my head and I don't know why, but I'm certainly pretty sure it just puts a ghost there and it has like a, maybe it has a purple bar under it. Is that what I'm thinking of? And that time, because it's a on a time when you have things destroyed or blueprints or what have you put down, there's actually like a timer basically because it eventually has to clear them off because you could put down so many that it causes the problem, performance problems for the game. So eventually it will start culling them. But the time limit is quite quite huge. Some mods actually play with that. Um, but I'm pretty sure it has like a purple bar underneath it and it's just a ghost. So this looks to be a different thing. Now, whether it's simply a change in the icon, which is what I assume it is, but I don't know, that could be some other change. Like maybe if you've destroyed the object, it identifies it differently, perhaps. I, I don't know. But or maybe that's an icon that says there's already an item on the way that's coming to replace it or something like that. So it feels like that might be different to what I've normally seen. The other option, of course, is I just don't recognize the X, um, the icon. But but yes, I saw this popping up and I thought, well, that, that looks different. If it is anything, I think it's so minor. I think it's just a, a change to the icon and that's it. Um, but yes, that, that could potentially be, I guess, some other functionality or change that we're getting. So I guess the only real like proper speculation point is this interaction with not yet published mechanic. So we know that that means that there is a mechanic that we have not seen at all yet or had any hint of. Oh, well, I guess maybe there have been a hint somewhere, but but we don't know. We know that this blog is talking about vehicles. So it is some interaction, I would suggest, between vehicles and a mechanic. Except that it then does go on to say screen positioning when deactivated latency hiding, hiding due to combat. So I guess the other possibility, and especially with them showing the tank quite a bit. I mean, also the the the, the, the car has a gun on it and you know, the tank has the flamer on it and all that sort of stuff. So they are combat vehicles as well. So it could be also related to combat in some way. We do know we are getting this thing where on Folgora vehicles will sink into the oil sand. So it can't be that because that's that's a known mechanic that they've explained to us. It can't be Folgora, you know, lightning strikes of vehicles because we we know that that would be a possibility. It can't be Volcanus like driving into lava or something like that that you could maybe accidentally do. The suggestion then is it's probably something related to either Bacchus or Aquila. We know that Aquila is 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 the ice planet. I mean, we don't definitely know that it's called Aquila, but we have been told that there is going to be an ice planet, I'm pretty sure. And uh, that would seem to tie up with it being Aquila, the last one, the furthest away from the, the, the sun. We also suspect that the missing intermediate planet that we all thought was coming up this week or last week or the week before i'm sure it will appear at some point but if that is some organic planet as is the speculation then as i've said before it could involve a massive shallow sea and so the interaction could be some essentially wave-based mechanic or i mean what some things that did occur to me on back is that it might be if it is basically a sea world and that the land is almost all submerged and only small pockets of land are you know, buildable on until you can start landfilling and stuff. Maybe water, there is actually an ocean and it sloshes in, sloshes in, it, the tide comes in and potentially your vehicle could get affected by that. The other possibility, of course, is if Aquilo is the frozen planet and your vehicle gets cold, it could start slowing down or you know, ice could form on it and you couldn't drive it and all those sorts of things. 
And so those would be the type of things that would be kind of modifiers to the speed. And therefore, because they would affect how fast the vehicle was running, if that mechanic is doing something separate, then you know the latent version might not account for it. And so the you know the latent version drives on at full speed, and actually you're in the sea or the shallow sea, and you're traveling traveling a lot slower. So the game state is hit. You know your vehicle's here, and you're over here, and suddenly you get out, and it says where, and then it says to the game, where am I? And actually you're you're way back here, and it has to rubber band and all that sort of stuff. So those are the type of things I'm thinking of that would be like an, a latency issue. Another one might be that you're able to load vehicles into other vehicles. Maybe Spider-Trons can now carry tanks, as in you drive the tank in, because at the moment they can obviously carry tanks in their inventory, but they can't carry full tanks. So could there be some mechanic where one vehicle can drive into another vehicle or something like that where you know maybe it can drive onto a train so you can drive you've got a flatbed train now where you can drive a, a tank onto the flatbed and it sits in the flatbed and and then you've got problems of speed and you want to drive off of the train but the train has set off because of latency and those are the only types of things that I can think of it being you know, we know that they don't do the latency thing for combat, which is why I'm kind of ruling that out. And we know that this is all about vehicles, so I'm thinking it's something to do with how a vehicle might interact with something. But what, I don't know. The other possibility is it's talking about the thing where we got the arm. You know, when we got that screenshot of the super fast foundry pumping out gear wheels and it had that my mysterious arm if you look at my, my blog post on the on my community page on on, on YouTube, you'll see I've, I've sort of zoomed into it so you can see it nicely. Is that, as I've speculated before, some kind of remote player avatar or remote vehicle or remote something that you can give instructions to and it does jobs? Can you take that, put it in a vehicle, put it in your tank, drive your tank? And so there are all sorts of interactivity issues because perhaps that's automated in some way. I guess also another slight possibility, there's a, a user, shout out to Second Engineer, um, who's basically posted quite a few posts, <laughs> quite a few posts on my uh, speculation videos and made some really interesting sort of thoughts and ideas. Um, and basically one of them was that the biters might become like a, a sort of a, a, a resource themselves. Dead biters become the actual, instead of like algae on, on Bacchus, that they become the resource, you know, dead biters become something you can harvest, essentially. So if it was something like that, you know, you're sort of running them over with your tank, of course, or shooting them with a tank, and it's a sort of a combined thing that in order for them to lay down, you know, so if your tank is um, different position to where you actually think it is, and you run a biter over, but you don't run them over, and it's going to then spawn in this growing material that you want to harvest, then that's possibly not going to be the right place. It's not actually going to kill the biter, that sort of thing. I don't think it's anything to do with that again, because if it is that, if that is a mechanic, then that technically is combat. But it did make me think that if my algae idea is the question, if there is some kind of interaction with a vehicle, because I wonder if the way you harvest that is is with this sucking up you know, action thing um, that it could maybe also be destroyed by the tank driving over it, that it's fragile in some way. Maybe there's some mechanic like that. And so any kind of issue of the tank not being where you think it is would mean that it wouldn't quite destroy it in the same way, if that makes sense. But again, I don't think it's that. I think that's that's too in the weeds, really. My guess is it is something to do with remotely controlled avatars and things like that about them getting into vehicles and driving because you maybe you've got a sort of a double lag system or it is to do with vehicles perhaps traveling in other vehicles so a flatbed for the train and you can put a tank on it and take the tank somewhere else that's that sort of a thing so so yeah it could also be that there is a plane i've, I've mentioned this before or boats you know, another type of vehicle that we're getting, maybe a, what do you call them, a jet boat, is it, where, no, they're not jet boats, are they, air boats, where they've got the big fan on the back and you can, you know, fly, you can fly slash float slash um, around, or a hovercraft, maybe, something like that, to make Bacchus easier to get around on. 
And of course, that then gives out other, all sorts of other issues because can it float over the top of certain things? Is it affected by other things and not things? And does it have like a, a hovercraft maybe where if it's slow speed or it's stopped, it would be affected by belts because it's on the ground. But if it's moving, then it's not affected by them at all because it just floats over the top. So there's all these possibilities of how some other vehicle, I guess, or some interaction with vehicles with vehicles or other things that could have caused them issues that could also be as yet unpolished mechanics. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, well, I don't actually think any of those will be the thing because those don't feel like mechanics to me. Mechanic feels like liquid metals or lightning or those feel like mechanics. Vehicles not interacting are interacting properly with other vehicles doesn't feel like a mechanic to me. But yeah, I'm really stumped. I would love for you to to give me your suggestions. What what do you think this yet published mechanic is that would have an issue with latency? You know, what is it that would be well latency is a problem for this mechanic? And you know, not any other mechanic sort of thing. Or different to any other mechanic, I guess. I hope you enjoyed today's Friday Facts video and might consider coming back for another one. If you'd like to chat about the latest Factorio Friday Facts, you can find me live streaming Factorio every weekend over on my Twitch channel, Actress Magisters. Thanks for watching. Cheers. I think that's enough wibble.